Bob Rathman and Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And today on the show, we are going to take a look at the next generation uh, operating system for Microsoft called Windows Vista. I know you're extremely excited, Sean. Yeah, I mean, it's like a, a preview as to what's going to happen in 2008. <laughs> do, you really think, do you really think the operating system is going to be released in 2008? Um, well, you know, it, we'll, we'll, we'll check it out. And, you know, we've been waiting for this thing for a number of months already. And, um, well, he, yeah, here's yeah, the thing. I, is Microsoft, you know, they developed this next generation operating system. Uh, the idea was originally coming out in 2004, and then it kind of got pushed to 2005, and then it was coming, coming out in you know, 2006, November, mm -hmm. and then now they said, oh, no, 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 wait a second, January 2007. And they're not sure, even sure, sure, sure about that anymore. Well, Steve Ballmer recently was interviewed, and he, he's like, uh, it's all about quality, 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 quality. So that means it's going to be pushed until the spring of 2007. But it really needs, I mean, here's the thing, is Beta 2 is uh, imminently available, and that's part of the reason why I wanted to uh, do this today with, uh, with Sean, because, you know, Beta 2 is sort of usually sort of the benchmark for a new operating system as to when it's kind of really kind of starting to function properly and well, and you're getting a sense of what the new operating system will kind of look like. Uh, there'll be minimal tweaks hereafter. Yeah, we'll see whether it is at that point already. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not exactly solid, but let's get into it. Let's have a look at it. So first of all, first off, I want to show you a bit about, well, what have you been wondering about uh, on Vista? Because I'll show you, you talk me through what, as a Mac fan mm -hmm. and a Windows naysayer. I'm not a Windows naysayer no. so much. I've actually used Windows for most of uh, my computing career. Okay, well, walk me through and I still do this. Uh, I think the biggest issue that uh, people have had with Windows over the last little while, that Mac has really gotten down mm -hmm. and that uh, has been a real bugaboo, if you'll excuse the term, in, in the Windows world for the last little while, is security. Yeah, I know it is. And so Microsoft got extremely criticized uh, about the security for Windows XP. Um, I, <laughs> well, <laughs> it could get that, actually. Before we go into it, actually, we should talk about that real quick. These are, uh, oops, excuse us while we talk, tell you a little bit about this. This is uh, uh, some rats that were made by Kim James. Thank you, Kim. Um, who uh, is the betrothed, I guess, um, Craig? Uh, <laughs> She's uh, engaged to be married to Craig Warden, the Sidewalker.com operations manager, and she decided to make us a bunch of uh, rats with lab coats. Isn't that cool? Yes. I hear that she had to sever some limbs to get this done, though. It is, yeah. Uh, rat surgery was required. Oh, I almost were. Anyway, so, uh, so sorry for the interruption there. I, I just wanted to comment because it fell off the table. Um, so we're talking about security, right? So Windows, off, Windows XP I mean, was rife with, with spyware and viruses <laughs> And, uh, and I wrote a book, actually, about it called The Absolute Beginner's Guide to Security Spam, Spyware and Viruses uh -huh. to help you through the problems you might have been having with Windows XP. Um, and as a direct response to my criticisms in the book, you know, they decided to really fix Vista, uh, Vista and fix the security in Vista, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to be perfectly fair to Microsoft, um, the, the problems with Windows XP aren't necessarily the problem with XP. I mean, every operating system is going to have bugs in it and, and things that people will take advantage of. You know, things that the programmers never figured out that people would try to take advantage of in ways, you know, there, there's always a back door into these things. Right. Windows XP is just the most popular operating system out there in and the it's the biggest target. Right, well it is. And then so Microsoft will defend themselves saying, hey, you know, we're really successful and so everybody wants a piece of us and so it's not fair. Uh, but, I mean, it, Windows XP was not designed to be secure. It was designed to be one of the most usable operating systems that Microsoft came out with. Uh, it also was really the first operating system that uh, took advantage of the broadband internet connection. And, of course, a broadband internet connection is like rolling a very fast on-ramp onto the highway straight out your front door. Yes. So, you know, all the bad guys are going to come charging in, and that's exactly what they did when that happened. So that's part of the reason why Windows XP was, you know, so inundated with all these nasties. Um, so, but they, they took this to heart. Microsoft took this to heart. Ashley, I think, felt very bitten by uh, the security issues. And so they've decided to make Vista as secure as they humanly possibly can. As a consequence, it's a problem. Because they've overcompensated, at least based on the beta, too, that, that I've been looking at. So what do they do? Well, so what happens when you do anything on this operating system is it, you, it asks you for permission. Now, you know, Mac does this very eff efficiently. Anything that you do, the sort of administratory, you know, changing system settings, installing things, it asks you for a password, and you have to do that. In this particular case, Microsoft's gone a little bit overboard. So let me show you so a very simple task. I'm okay. going to delete a file off of the system here called feedback. Now watch this. If I hit delete, OK, so I get a dialog box. Hey, you're going to send this to the recycle bin. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty standard that's with pretty Windows standard. XP. Even. So I'm going to say yes. And it's going to say, well, wait a second, you need to provide administrator credentials. Wait, that's just a file on your desktop. Why would you need to do that? I don't know. 
And you know what? I am logged in as an administrator here. I have superpowers on this system, but it's still going to get in the way. So I'm going to say continue, and wait a second. It's now going to go dim, and it, it wants my permission, and I'm going to go continue again, and then it's going to delete it. So to okay. me, that's two clicks too many. Yes. And for, for, for a file that's sitting on your desktop, you just want to delete. Now, I understand if you want to change system settings or anything like that, it's going to issue bug you. It should bug you a couple times. Yes, I mean, that's the nice thing about uh, the Mac uh, operating system is when you're trying to do anything that tries to get into the system, then it asks you for your permission to do that and asks you. I mean, it doesn't even do that for all of those things, just the ones that are really serious. They're really mission critical. And, and, and then it asks you for your password, and you have to think about it. When you get into this situation where it's asking you every 10 seconds for, for something and asks you four times for the same item. Well, as a consequence, what's going to happen is you're going to get like um, dialogue fatigue, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to get tired of saying, yes, yes, yes. Yes. So if spyware or, or viruses try to do this, you're going to go, yeah, okay, put the virus on, put the spyware on. You know, you're going to, because you're going to be so fed up with seeing those dialogue. Yeah, it could ask you right in the dialogue, would you like to install this uh, wreckyoursystem.exe? And you'll just go, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. But, you know, to, to Microsoft defense, uh, this is beta 2, okay? So, you know, at this point, they're going to be starting to fine tune it. So I, I, I know that they will improve this situation before it's released in, I was going to say January 2007, but. In 2007 sometime. Um, I, I hope they fix that up because that would get annoying very quickly. Well, and here's another classic example. I'm going to go change the time. So I right click on the time and I say adjust the time and date. And, uh, you know, I'm going to change, I'm going to click another button, change date and time. And I'm asked, you know, hey, a program needs your permission to continue. It's like, let me change the time. <laughs> you know, let me change the time. Just let me change the time. Right, exactly. So you're just going to get fed up with it after a while. So Microsoft has to uh, stop Sean from doing that because it'll cause some brain injuries. Um, so that's one of the key issues. Now, they have integrated directly into the operating system. Um, do you remember how they had Microsoft uh, anti-spyware, which they re renamed Windows Defender? Yes. Well, Windows Defender is now hardwired directly into um, the operating system. And so, you know, you have built-in spyware protection. Now, it hasn't got a stellar reputation as a great piece of anti-spyware software, especially mm. since the integration. But yeah, the, the thing in the test we did, it was medium. It was it was fair to medium. Right, exactly. It was fair to medium. You know, it's going to capture 40, 50 percent. Yeah. I mean, theoretically, by this kind of mm -hmm. time this comes out, hopefully it'll be on top yeah. of it. And actually, it was better, come to think of it, than some of the paid versions that were out there. It was. It really was. Yeah, it was. So, but, but I've noticed since we did those tests, it's kind of lost some of its shine, as it were. Well, it, it, I'm wondering if that's maybe the, the team that was doing that is now rededicating their efforts to elsewhere in the operating system. No, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Um, the other nice thing about this is Windows, the Windows firewall is, continues to be in here. Uh, it is now two-way, though. Uh, here we go. I use that account again. Continue. I want to go to the firewall to change the settings and continue again. There we go. <laughs> now, by default, the, uh, the firewall is going to be, uh, it's actually going to, it's going to actually watch, watch traffic um, coming in but not going out. But you can actually activate it to watch the traffic going out as well. So it's a two-way firewall. That's a very good idea and we're happy to see that. Um, and then, uh, on, you know, so that's basically the security features. There was all kinds of other bits and pieces in there, but uh, so security, good. Integration, bad. So I'm not very happy about that. Um, one of the things, though, that I noticed about the Mac, when, the Mac OS X when it came out, uh, was its brand new interface. Mm -hmm. And so Microsoft has actually made an effort to improve the interface on Windows XP. Yeah, I think Steve Jobs said when uh, OS X came out that he wanted all the icons to just jump out at you and look like pieces of candy that you wanted to eat. Mm -hmm. and you know, they just wanted them to look really, really good. Yeah, and it drove me crazy when it came out. And it, it looked good it, it, you know, for people that were more serious about their OS that wanted them. But, you know, there's this expectation that if it works well, it looks ugly. And if it looks really good, then maybe it's not so functional. Yeah. Well, and I think Microsoft took a page out of Steve Jobs' book and said, let's make Windows look better. So they mm -hmm. created something called AeroGlass, and this is the AeroGlass interface. So as you can see, when I pull up the uh, Start menu, for example, in here, everything is, you know, it's slightly glassy, right? Mm -hmm. You can kind of see through it. Um, they have a brand new sidebar that has something called gadgets, mm -hmm. as opposed to widgets. <laughs> widgets on the Mac. So we'll just uh, turn that on here. So as you can see, you can put little you know, devices all the way up and down that. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, it's kind of useful, kind of good. Um, and then the other thing that I quite like about this is if you have multiple windows open, uh, one of the things that you can do is you can, uh, you can scroll through them visually like this. Watch this. Which is kind of fun. Uh -huh. So more 3D effect to it. More 3D effect to it. Now this is looking a bit pixelated right here. 
it is this again this is you know beta 2 uh, plus we're running because, for demo purposes because we're running Camtasia to record this for our uh, viewership so this isn't necessarily an optimal resolution no you, you're not getting the same performance perhaps as you would do if it was just you or your system and your desktop you had to run a re low resolution and uh, so it's a little but I, I like that the fact that you can actually see all of the windows that are up and scroll through them really quickly right especially if you have multiple windows open in, in the same application so a lot of Firefox windows then you can see at a glance which one is which that's right one of the other nice things is down here the taskbar when you put uh, your mouse over it you can actually see a preview of what is in that window which is really kind of clever. Mm -hmm. There's Camtasia Studio, you know, Microsoft Word. Again, quite quite uh, useful, and uh, so it uses visual cues now to help you navigate through the system, which is really, really helpful. Yeah, in a way, that's another page out of the Macintosh book, because when you minimize a window under Mac OS X, it comes down over to the right-hand side of the bar, and you can actually see what it is. Right, so. very good. The other, the other thing that I wanted to show you uh, today before, uh, well, actually, let's, yeah, let's go with this. You know, I love to fiddle around inside operating systems and mess around with, you know, the system tools and things. And one of the biggest bugaboos I had with Windows... Uh, hey, you used bugaboo now too. I did, that's right. It's the word of the day, bugaboo. Um, is um, one of the things that um, you know, has always bugged me about Windows XP is that you know, it kind of slows down over time. You have to reinstall and reformat it. Mm -hmm. Well, in Vista, they've added three new backup tools. I'm going to show you real quick here. Uh, built into the system that makes backing up the system very, very simple. Because, of course, and my guess is you know, they haven't got rid of the, the registry in this. They've actually virtualized the mm -hmm. registry, so it's not quite as ugly, but uh, I suspect that, you know, unless they've done some major renovations in behind the scenes, that we're still going to have reformat and reinstall issues that will be necessary every six months to a year or so with a new version of Windows Vista. I think with most operating systems that you use and change things on on an ongoing basis, you have to do that every so often anyhow. That's right. Well, let's go into, uh, we're going to go real quick into the system tools here and accessories. And uh, I want to show you, there's a couple of items here. Um, number one, it has backup, the backup application. What it does is it basically takes everything in the users folder, which is where my documents, uh, it's kind of replaces my documents, and it has mm -hmm. users and Andy and Sean and that sort of thing, and then all our, our personal files. So it'll backup all those to an external flash drive, or uh, it'll actually burn it to DVD, which is kind of mm -hmm. nice, uh, or a hard drive. Um, and then it also has something called system restore. Oh no, system restore, of course, is to take it back. We've seen that in XP right. and that sort of thing. Uh, but one of the, my favorite things is Windows Easy Transfer. Now, Windows Easy Transfer basically uh, takes you into a situation. I know, another dialog box. Um, what it does is it takes all the settings, all the customizations you've made to Windows, all the files and folders in your user folders, and that sort of thing, and will dump it out onto a, a, another device so that you can reinstall and reformat and suck it all back in. And it, it, Windows has all the settings that it had before, which mm -hmm. is really, really wonderful. Um, a great way, great tool to use if you want to reinstall and reformat. So you go, that's kind of the, that's a, we only have 15 minutes, so uh, I didn't want to go too deep into it. And we may, we may update you later on uh, as this progresses, but uh, there's some things that we wanted to touch on real okay. quick for Windows Vista. So the one thing I want to know, actually, we, we can't get away with not mentioning this, is what do you need to run this on your system? What yeah, this is a hardware specs? This is a real problem. So the minimum specs, uh, Microsoft's calling it a modern Pentium level processor, which suggests that, you know, seven or 800 megahertz. You know, but I would say you know gigahertz and, and beyond, preferable two, two gigahertz. Mm -hmm. If you want to use the Aero Glass interface, you're going to need 64 megabytes and perhaps 128 megabytes of video RAM. Okay. You're going to need a two gigahertz machine or better, um, and uh, you know lots of hard drive space. So if you don't have that uh, modern video card, you can still run. You can still run. You just don't get all right. those pretty effects. You don't right. get uh, you know sort of all the 3D effects and uh, and the gradations and all those kinds of things. All right. How much system RAM do you need? Uh, ideally, 512 megabytes. Ideally. Well, sorry, ideally. To start, <laughs> half a gig. All right. Right? That sounds ideally, more like uh, it. Ideally, I've been running this with, uh, this is a Dell machine that, that Dell sent me um, for the duration of uh, my testing of Vista and the book I'm going to write. And uh, it has, I think, a gig or a gig and a half in it. So, and it runs quite nicely with that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, 512 megs to start, but I recommend a gig and beyond that if you're... Okay. Have you been running any, um, any high RAM usage applications, like, say, Photoshop? In a previous version, I did, and uh, I didn't get very far because it would crash a lot. Okay, um, so let's let's say a gig to start then, if you want to do any yeah. real work. Yeah, a gig to start. Two gigs if you're going to run, you know, you're going to edit photographs. If you're going to do video, of course, you need four gigs anyway, as, mm -hmm. a, as a general rule. But yeah, pretty uh, intensive, uh, hungry from a hardware perspective. All right. So there you go. That's it for Windows Vista. We're done. Um, should we have any uh, fun notes this this week? Um, just the usual, I guess. Yeah, just yeah. the usual. You can go to our forums at labrats.tv slash forums. Right, absolutely. Um, and we like your feedback, feedback at labrats.tv. And actually, go check out our blog again. We're actually having uh, um, someone actually writing for us because we can't... And who would that be? Yeah, that's uh, Maurice. Do you remember Helmut Cam guy Helmut from Cam, uh, yes. the week? He's 
My head hurts. <laughs> Mo is uh, Mo is our associate producer, and so uh, he's yeah he's taking on the, the uh, job of updating the blog because yes. we weren't doing it. No, so hopefully we'll have updates more than once every three months or so. <laughs> All right, that's it for us. I'm Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. Thanks for uh, downloading, and we'll see you next time. Are you ready? Quality, 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 quality.